So that means, therefore, there is a zero at x equals zero of order two. Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. I do hope you're all well. Let me know how you're doing in the comments down below. I've not seen you for around about two weeks. I hope that you are all okay. I just have not been feeling like uploading. Last week I started semester one and I'm um, now, no I didn't. I started semester two. Week one of semester two was last week. I'm now in week two of semester two. And uh, we've got semester one out of the way. What I thought I would do today is take you through everything that I kind of have to update you about, about semester one. I thought I'd go through my courses, how I found it, the assessment in January, everything like that. If you found this video useful, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. Check out some other videos of mine as well. You might find them entertaining. You never know. Now let's jump into the video. Before I take you through my three courses, what I wanted to do was just take you through kind of the general setup of semester one. I was doing my A-levels. I'd already done my A-level maths because I did that a year early. I did that in my first year at college. You probably know all this if you watch my videos, but I'll tell you anyway. And then um, in my second year of A-levels, I was planning on doing my A-level drama and A-level further maths because I did three A-levels and I'd got my A-level maths out of the way. Of course, all went wrong because of lockdown so I haven't done exams or maths really or any kind of learning for a really long time and then in uh, September we started preparing for semester one and at the start of semester one we thought that it was just going to be semester one that was going to be online and in semester two everything was going to be okay of course that's not the case because we are still in a lockdown so semester two which I'm in right now is still online all of our lectures for semester one were on zoom that was really very very strange we weren't obviously as they should have been and um, I'll take you through kind of the blended learning approach and the kind of stuff that I uh, was doing to actually learn the maths but the lectures weren't bad we had alongside them videos as well and the videos is kind of like where the main teaching happened the live lectures which are actually for us called review sessions they just kind of took us through examples and annoyingly some lecturers did just copy the videos which was very annoying and a bit of waste of time but never mind they now actually in semester two have people in the lectures that are like second year or third year students and they go through the chat and answer questions which is very very useful it did kind of take me a while to get used to everything i did actually take you through my week one of uni so if you haven't seen that then uh, I'll leave it on the screen here you can go and check it out just something so simple as finding a zoom link and getting on it in time is in a way as stressful as like finding the lecturer's room but once I did get into it I really enjoyed it and uh, I felt like it worked quite well one thing that I struggled with a little bit in general was just knowing when or at the start anyway knowing when I needed to submit work and uh, who I needed to, to submit it for and where I submit it because that was kind of something that was like right you started uni now you need to find all of that out yourself or well, that's how I felt anyway because our whole uni was literally like this is university for me this is literally just a piece of technology and if I switch that technology off it's like I'm not at uni because everything's online we use blackboard if anybody else uses that then you know that it's a slight disaster some things go wrong there's just links flying around everywhere but we submit our work all on there as you can probably tell I'm not mentioning anything about parties about meeting people about drinking, about anything else that you're supposed to do at university. One, because that sounds horrendous to me and I would not want to do any of that. But two, because we don't have an option to do that. I live at home, if anybody doesn't know. So the only people that are with me at the minute is my family. I am in groups with people from my course, but I, you know, only really know names on a screen, which is sad, but to be honest, I'm not really too bothered. I'm quite happy in my office here, but um, yeah, it's very, very kind of education-based, my start of university, which is the same for many other people. We haven't been able to do lots of stuff. And also, I haven't mentioned this, but Freshers Week was kind of non-existent. There was this thing that I joined, and it's quite funny actually, because if anyone knows me, I really, not that I don't like parties, but I'm just kind of not a party person. I'll do some fun stuff, but as long as like, I know what I'm getting myself into, if that makes sense. There was this thing that I signed up for, and I left straight away. It was basically just a live stream of two guys, um, Freshers Week, on your 
your own in your house is no good, so I just left it. I'm more education focused, if you can't tell. Yeah, I had three courses throughout the whole of semester one. I'm now in semester two and we have four courses. My three courses were foundations of pure maths, probability and calculus and vectors. You don't really realise the different types of maths until you actually get to university because you kind of learn everything in your maths class at A level or at GCSE. But when you get to university, you know, you can really separate the maths and split it up and into different courses and you can specialise in what you want to specialise in. We had no choices in semester one of any of the courses. I'll go through in a minute, I'm just looking at my notes here. I'll go through and break down and talk about each of my three courses. But overall, uh, we had sheets that we had to submit each week for each course. I don't know the marks of my courses, or well, what I got in each course yet, because we had a big exam at the end of January. I know we've not got the marks back yet, so I'll go through and I'll uh, I'll take you through my courses. But um, yeah, that was kind of the general setup of everything. It started off really, really well. And if you watch my week one vlog of me going to, or going to university, I say starting university at home, then I'm very, very positive. And I still am really, really positive. But you can only sit in your office for so long. You can only do online uni for so long. After my exams at the end of semester one, I had a week of just nothing before I started semester two and I literally did nothing. The only thing I did was watched all three seasons of Stranger Things and I'm now waiting for season four to come out. I don't know when that's coming out but it's coming out soon apparently. Now what I thought I would talk about is my three courses. I'm going to break them down, I'm going to tell you what I learnt and if you're wanting to do a master degree then hopefully you will find this information useful. I also probably should have mentioned that I'm at the University of Manchester. The first course was Foundations of Pure Maths and it kind of says it in the title, it's the foundations of your maths. This course was very theory based, very wordy, very theory, there was lots of proofs and I had seen quite a bit of this course before but the majority of it, especially when I got on to uh, the later weeks, it was all new basically. Like I said, we had sheets that we submitted each week and we submitted those for the tutorials or were they called supervisions? I can't remember. What we had is we had two lecturers. One lecturer did everything from week one to week six and then we had a lecturer that took over in week seven and they did seven to eleven. The course was quite nice and I'd seen quite a lot of it before in week one to six. Things like proof by induction, proof by contradiction. There was lots of definitions in the first six weeks and that was just kind of something that I had to sit down and learn them. If I think about maths at degree level, it was kind of basic level and especially what I'm doing now, it was quite basic and it slowly introduced you nicely. So the maths wasn't hard at the start of this course, it was just having the motivation and uh, making sure I get in a routine to start actually doing the maths. And not just me felt this, I remember saying in my chat and other people were agreeing that it's like the course went from zero to 100 when we went into the second half of the course and got a new lecturer. In the second half, I, you know what, off the top of my head, <laughs> I can't actually remember what we did. The main thing we did was modulo arithmetic and that was really, really new. It took me a while to get my head around that. That was something that I enjoyed once I could do it and I really, really did. It's very logical solving these uh, modulo equations and uh, what they're called? Congruences, that's it, solving things like that. So I enjoyed it, it just took me a while to get into it. We had to submit sheets each week for the tutorials. We only had to submit the starred questions. So, of course, like, I'm, you know, I'm just an old person, like anybody else. At the start, I was like, right, okay, we've got this. I attempted all the questions on the sheet. Then as I got into the course, I was like, let's just do the starred questions. So at some times, I probably could have done all the questions, but you know, when you're at home, you can get a little bit overwhelmed and that's totally normal. And uh, sometimes I didn't do all the questions, but I always submitted my questions or the ones that I needed to do anyway. And actually, on every single one of my sheets, you had a mark either zero, one or two. They mark you zero if you just didn't submit it or you just didn't try. One if you kind of half did the sheet and then uh, you got two if, you know, you really attempted it. You might not have got the maths fully correct, but you had a really good go and you just made a few errors. And I actually quite proudly got two marks on every single one of my sheets. So full marks for all of my sheets, which I was really, really pleased with. We had our exam at the end of January and I've said in many of my vlogs 
there was two parts to the exam. We had an exam that was exactly like what we would have had in, a, in an exam hall. It was a solution sheet that we had to upload our solutions to. And then we had an online exam. And I'm just going to read here so you get an idea of where my marks are coming on for semester one. 10% came from the weekly homeworks. Uh, which were the supervision sheets. Then 15%, oh yes, I forgot to mention, was the course coursework in week six. We just had a little sheet that we needed to do in an online test in week six. And then 75% of my mark for foundations came from my end of semester assessment. I haven't got those marks back yet. I think we'll probably get them maybe the end of Feb, possibly into March, I'm not too sure. Next, I'm gonna be talking about calculus and vectors. Just like foundations, I had a week Weekly sheet that I needed to submit for my supervisions. For calculus and vectors, we had a quiz that we had to do each week, and those weekly quizzes were worth 10% of our overall grade. I knew quite a lot of this course from A level. To some people that hadn't done further maths, this probably would have been quite hard. If I hadn't have done further maths, I really, really would have struggled with this. Not because I like found the maths really hard. It was just that they didn't, and I'm understandable, you don't have the time to teach further maths the way you get taught at A-level, but lots of things were not skipped over, but just taught really, really quickly. And of course we are at uni, so you're expected to go and do your research. So that's why whenever anybody asks me, is further maths essential for your degree? No, it's not, because it's not a requirement at the majority of universities. Do check where you wanna go, but no, it's not a requirement, but it 100% definitely does help. And I'm really glad that I had it. It. And also not just complex numbers, I met in this course loads of other topics as well. Different methods of integration, types of integration, different methods of uh, differentiating as well, and different types of differentiation. Taylor series I've met before, and uh, in my book over there, which I actually, oh no it's not, where is it? It's here. This book really, really helped me. Now this is actually my teachers. So Miss Davies, if you're watching, which you're probably not, I will bring this back to you. I'll take this back to college. I've just obviously not been able to. There was a lot of stuff in that that I'd seen before. Let me have a look at the chapters. Leibniz theorem, El Hopital's rule, uh, Taylor series I mentioned. Differential equations we're just getting onto in semester two now. We didn't see any differential equations in semester one. Vectors came along in the second half of this course, which I'll talk about in a minute, but quite a lot of stuff was further maths day, so I'm really pleased that I did do further maths. Don't panic if you wanted to do a degree and you don't do further maths, you'll just have to put in a little extra work. But there is a point where even me doing further maths was putting me on the same level as other people because only at the start you have a slight advantage and at the start of the topics and then with the further maths topics they build on them to give you not degree topics but a little bit more knowledge about that certain topic if that makes sense. I did find the vectors course a little bit more challenging. Not that I found vectors hard, it just took me a while to get my head around it and that was actually, thinking about it, the same at A-level. I uh, like to draw my diagrams, I like to know what's happening and sometimes with vectors things can just come out of the blue or, you know, it's a little bit hard to kind of visualise something. I had to recap on some bits, like I said, from further maths but also freshen up on new bits as well that I'd never seen before. I did enjoy the course though, nevertheless. The exam was the first one I did for calculus and vectors and uh, I feel like it was possibly the hardest one of them. Again, like foundations, we had two parts. We had an online and a written solution exam. Off the top of my head right now without looking back and seeing my solutions, I can't really remember how it went. I know that it was a little bit of a shock because it was the first exam I'd done online. Let me just tell you how this course was broken down. So 10% came from the weekly tests. The weekly tests were really, really quite simple. It was just, you know, can you apply your knowledge of what you've learned this week to the tests online? And then we also had supervision sheets and they were worth 10% each week. And then there was an online test in week six worth 10% and uh, an online test in week 11, which was worth 10%. And then the end of semester exam in January, which I've just finished and that's what I was just talking about, that was 60%. Now I'm gonna talk about probability. Now I've left probability towards the end because it kind of doesn't fit the trend of my other courses. And that is kind of how I felt when I was learning all this in semester one. If you've followed some of my vlogs, you'll know that probability, I'm not 
putting shade on anybody here. I'm not lying when I say this, it's just the truth. It wasn't organized very, very well. Especially towards the end, I was going in the folders for each week and finding things that I've never seen before or that was like, for example, I think week 10 was supposed to be normal distribution, but we went in and we were learning like the gamma distribution. And uh, that was the same then for week 11 and we'd learn the normal distribution in week 11. And it was all a little bit confusing. I'm not gonna lie. Now we had a sheet each week for probability and for some reason we did have a supervision or a tutorial, whatever you want to call it, but we didn't have to submit our answers to this sheet. I don't know why. Yes, you know, I do love my maths, I do love working, but when you don't have to submit something and the work is not optional, but it's kind of up to you to do it. I am just a human being. Sometimes I didn't always do it. Even though I always tell you lot to make sure you plan and you get your work done, I'm gonna be real with you. Sometimes I didn't do my work all the time. At the start of the course, I did struggle and I struggled quite badly, to be honest. I haven't done probability since A-level maths because I didn't do probability in my second year. This course was very heavily distribution based and I know that's weird because that is probability, but it was very kind of like learn your formulas. There wasn't much engagement with the course. Oh, that's how I feel anyway. And for that reason, I'm very glad the online exam at the end, the final semester one um, exam was online because if it wasn't online, I probably wouldn't have done as well as I would have done if it was just a normal exam because I had that kind of backup of being able to look at notes and things. And what we had to do for probability was we had a weekly test each week. There was only two or three questions on the test and what we had to do is let's say we are in week six the test for the week six week was assessing what we did in week five now did it no not all the time and that was slightly annoying I'd revise I'd open the test and I'd think I, uh, I did get used to the course as the course went on the teaching was a little bit different to what I'd have I'd been taught before there was a lot more distributions and uh, I I kind of had a lot more to learn than to learn and apply, if that makes sense. A lot of the maths was reading the notes and just learning it. The probability is not really my favourite. I like it when I can get it, but it frustrates me when I don't understand what's going on. Saying all of that, the final exam was actually very, very nice. I thought the exam was going to be really hard because of what the weekly test had been like, but I opened it and actually felt quite confident. I thought, oh, this is going to be good. I can do this. So uh, again, I still not got my results back. I'm going to do a reaction to my results when I get them but I was really pleased with how the January exam went. Even though the probability course didn't go as, as well as my other courses for me anyway, the result I think is gonna be quite good. That's me, fingers crossed, touching wood, because the exam went really well, and I think it was the best exam of my three courses, actually. Let me take you through how we were broken down for probability. 20% was the online tests, and then I think, because I can't think of us, I don't think we had a week six sort of mid semester exam. I don't think we had that. So of course that leaves 80% to the end of semester exam. That's it. I think I'm gonna do a little vote here. If I had to put my courses in order, number three being the worst, number one being the best. So let's get some dramatic music. In third place, I think you might know what's coming. I would put probability as third. In second place, I would say calculus and vectors. So in third place, no, in first place, I would say foundations of pure maths. Just because I got the most satisfaction out of doing that course and doing those questions on the course because I quite enjoyed it once I could do it. So yes, that's everything I have for today's video. If you did enjoy, like I said at the start, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what videos you want to see. Follow me over on Instagram to stay updated. And I think it's there, or is it there? I'm not sure, it's somewhere on the screen. Anyway, uh, yeah, let me know what you're doing and I'll see you very, very soon with a brand new video. Thanks for watching everyone, bye. Davies, if you're watching, which you're probably not, I will bring this back to you. I'll take this back to college. I've just obviously not been able to. <laughs>